Today I have the new Huion Inspiroy 2, a budget-friendly pen tablet that promises a lot of performance and it comes packed with features. But does the performance come at a price? We'll check it out in just a second. Now, as mentioned, this is a pen tablet, which means it needs a host computer or laptop to connect to. You put the pen tablet on a table or a desk, and you look at your laptop screen or monitor to see what you're drawing. With the quick unboxing now, the first thing we'll take out is the USB-C to USB-A connector cable. This is not a wireless device, so you're going to need the cable. The USB-C end goes into the tablet. The USB-A end goes into your laptop or computer. They do include a USB-C to USB-A adapter for those of you who have a MacBook or only have USB-C inputs available. We've got a new pen holder we'll talk about and the new PW110 pen which we will also cover. The tablet is super thin, so it's gonna fit in a laptop bag. Along the back, you have a textured finish, and you have a number of rubber feet to make sure it doesn't move around. The body is made of plastic, not metal, but it's very solid. It doesn't feel cheap at all. When you stack these items together, here's your nice bit of kit. We're gonna pay the bills now. As I mentioned, it is a pen tablet. The Pentec here is Electromagnetic Residence, EMR for short, so you don't have any cheap battery tech here. This is the same quality the pros use. Now in the large and medium edition, you have eight programmable press keys, a scroll wheel, and three group keys, which I'll explain a little bit later. Along with the three different colors, black, pine green, and sakura pink, you have three different sizes. The one I'm testing with is the large 10 by five by 6.5, and you can see the rest of the sizes as you scale down. Now these aren't overly huge devices, so the Inspiroy 2 large is not nearly as large as the Inspiroy Giano, which I reviewed a couple of months on this channel. Links down below. Now this is a new pen for Huion, PW1110. The pressure levels are still 8192, it's battery free. The report rate is 266 PPS, which as gamers know, helps in those quick fast movements. Tilt is supported at 60 degrees, and they didn't downgrade the tech here, they included their Pentec 3.0, which has a shorter pen nib and their latest tech for the most precise pen Huion has made so far. The pen itself is thinner and shorter than previous models. The grip itself material has been changed, it feels a little less sticky, and it doesn't attract as much dust. It has two programmable buttons, it tapers off towards the back with no eraser, and that pen barrel is a bit thinner, say from the previous PW517. The pen nib is very stiff, it's not going to move on you. For a tablet aimed towards the budget, they shipped a very quality pen with it. Along with it, a new pen holder with 10 spare nibs inside, along with a nib remover on the bottom. To change them out, you put the pen in, tilt slightly, and pull the nib right out. Piece of cake. Pen can either go upright or on its side. Either way, it's going to stay put, and is an improvement over the previous donut-shaped pen holder. Speaking of the PW517, to do a size comparison to let you know, as I mentioned, it is quite a bit shorter and thinner, which is going to help you in those long sessions. It doesn't take away from the PW517, but I do feel like it's a push towards thinner pens now and in the future. Okay, moving on to some pen tests, I always like to start in Sketchbook Pro with some light, medium, and hard pressure lines. I did tweak the pressure in the driver, I'll show you guys that in a minute. This feels good so far, so I'll move to a pen tool. Now what I'm doing is starting light, I want to make sure I can maintain consistent pressure throughout the wavy line. The Pentec 3.0 comes through here, as I'm tapering off nice at the ends, without any kind of ugly shoelace effect. This is a similar test with the ellipses. I'm just looking for consistency. Notice how the ellipse starts with a point as I'm pressing light and gets thicker as I'm pressing harder. Then at the end of the ellipse, when I pull up, I get a nice sharp taper, proving two things. One, the pen maintains its pressure curve. And two, there aren't any bad spots on the tablet. You can get that sometimes, where there's just different spots, usually the corners, that have some issues when it comes to accuracy. Not here though. The next thing I wanna see is how fast the pen is keeping up, and I do that using some cross-hatching. The idea being, the pen tip and the cursor on the screen are synced up and are exactly where you expect it to be. EMR inherently has some lag, but it's a lot less noticeable in pen tablets as opposed to pen displays. Even then, it's more of an adjustment than a deterrent. Most digital artists don't even notice it, and I'm not noticing a problem here. Hey, do me a favor, if you find that this video helpful, subscribe, hit the bell button, drop a like, and drop a comment so you won't miss anything.
As mentioned, you got eight express keys and these three group keys. Now these three group keys is something I haven't seen in a tablet before. Let me show you how it works. Basically, each button gives you an additional group of eight configuration options, and they're completely customizable. So as you push each button, the key assignments change to the express keys to whatever you want to set them as. What I'm showing you here is the defaults. This is a spectacular feature which moves us along to the driver. We'll go quick here, but your working area is where you're going to set things like rotation and map to the screen. This is what I was telling you before where I changed the pressure. What's nice is they give you some presets. So I just changed it one down because I like to press a little harder. It gives me a little bit more on the lighter end. Under programs, you can add custom profiles to different art applications just by assigning it. In the gear, you could back up your configuration, change the theme, and about, you could check for updates to the driver. Those key assignments, this is how you set them. There are a lot of different options. However, I just usually stick to keyboard shortcuts within the program that I'm using. There is one exception, and that's this quick menu. The quick menu will come up on screen when you hit one of your express keys to give you additional options. For example, I set this one to save, and now when I click that express key, I have a save option right on screen. Move along to the ruler tests. Once again, this is not as important on a pen tablet, but we'll do it anyway. We're doing slow diagonal lines using a brush with no stabilization, just a dead like 10 pixel brush. We've got a little wobble here, nothing I'm concerned about, and it's pretty consistent with just about every tablet I've tested out there. Next, I want to test the tilt function. So draw in a straight line, then I come in and tilt the pen so you can see on screen how I'm tilting it and how the pen responds. You can see we're looking good here, but we'll go into Clip Studio and do the same test using a friend and tilt pencil just to make sure we're seeing the same thing across programs. This is shading out pretty nice. We'll move on to the next one. I did get a chance to test this in Medibank Paint, so I pulled up Krita. And again, I'm just doing those long strokes to see if I maintain consistency in a different program. Even these quick line throws look pretty good in Krita. So overall, with my testing, I'm pretty happy. For those who might be looking at this for the Android mode, keep in mind you're only going to have partial use of the tablet service. This gives you a general idea, at least on a large model, how exactly that works, and you'll have to scale down appropriately if you go to a smaller model. So let's bring this one in for a landing for some final thoughts. A. I really like Huya on pen tablets, which is why I keep reviewing them. B. I was glad to see that as opposed to other tablet manufacturers, they included their best pen. I can't tell you how cool those key groupings are. You're basically getting 24 keys plus the scroll wheel, potentially eliminating the need at all for any kind of keyboard or shortcut device because you have so many options. One thing I didn't mention is the tablet texture. Now Huion claims it's about a 20% increase in friction over the previous generation. Well, I can't quantify if that's exactly true or not. It feels pretty good. As you can see here, with just a basic brush I have in Photoshop, I'm getting all kinds of gradients. I really had a blast using this tablet. And finally, the price to performance is great. Generally, people will ask me, they'll come into comments and say, well, what about this one versus this one? Typically, once you start scaling up in price, you either get more features, or maybe the tablet was made with better materials, such as more metal. In this case, the performance is there. Sure, you don't get things like wireless, but for under 100 price range, even for the large, this is not only good for beginners, but for even experienced pros, who want something affordable to stick in a bag as a laptop when they're on the road. Hey, hopefully this helped you out. If you think this video was good, why don't you check out this one over here? I'll see you guys in the next one.